Hello, this is Dr. Kat Fleece from Central New Mexico Community College. In video G here of the endocrine system, we're going to start discussing the pituitary gland. Now, the pituitary gland has two parts to it, an anterior and a posterior part. We're going to start with the posterior part, which is mostly nervous tissue and consequently Another way of referring to the posterior part of the pituitary is to call it the neurohypophysis, literally meaning a growth underneath the hypothalamus made up of um, nervous tissue. So if we zo zoom in to a mid-sagittal cut of our brain, right here, this filled in blue area is the hypothalamus and then these two lobes are representing the pituitary. So if we blow this up, we can see this a little bit better. Here we see the egg-shaped half of our uh, thalamus, and here we see the more triangular half of our hypothalamus, and then dangling off with the help of a stem called the infundibulum, hangling, uh, dangling off the hypothalamus, we see the, the two-lobed pituitary gland with the anterior lobe referred to as the anterior pituitary, the posterior lobe, the posterior pituitary. And the synonyms for them are neurohypophysis for the posterior pituitary. Any word that has the term physis, physis in it always refers to growth, hypo below, and neuro, of course, referring to nervous tissue. The anterior pituitary is referred to differently as well, and it's called the adenohypophysis. And adeno refers to truly glandular, and indeed it is made up of epithelial tissue, like all true glands are. So the posterior pituitary is not like your typical gland. It's more like the adrenal medulla. Remember, the adrenal medulla is also a region in the adrenal gland that is not epithelial tissue, but it's modified uh, postganglionic sympathetic fibers, or neurons, we should say. It's easier to understand why the posterior pituitary is referred to as the neurohypophysis. Let's take a look. Right here is our posterior pituitary, and notice that it receives axons, and of course axonal terminals, assume that the axonal terminals are right here. It receives axons that start all the way in the hypothalamus. So in the hypothalamus are the cell bodies of these axons, or the cell bodies of these neurons. They're uh, clustered into two separate nuclei, don't worry too much about memorizing the, the names of these nuclei. And of course, it's in these cell bodies where these hormones, that is oxytocin and ADH, are synthesized. And <clears throat> these hormones can actually be stored in the axonal terminals. Now, when do they get released? Well, when action potentials propagate down the axons, it's going to trigger the release of the hormones, just like you learned how neurotransmitters are released. We can't really tr truly refer to oxytocin and ADH here as neurotransmitters because they're going to land, or they're going to, I should say, end up in this capillary bed, or referred to as the capillary plexus, and not on a postsynaptic membrane. I'm going to assume you remember the functions of antidiuretic hormone. But let's, let's just say a few words here about oxytocin. So oxytocin is going to be released when the uterus is stretched, as in during childbirth, but also during a baby suckling. So we might recall when you were introduced to a positive feedback mechanism in, in, inter, in uh, Anatomy and Physiology 1, how oxytocin is going to continue making the uterus contract such that eventually the baby is literally, literally forced out of the birth canal. Another nice example that 
of, of a positive feedback mechanism that again involves oxytocin is the ejection of milk from the mammary glands or the breasts when the breasts are stimulated by the suckling of a baby. So those are your two very important positive feedback mechanisms that um, result from oxytocin release. Oxytocin has other very important functions. It's very, it's, it plays an important role in sexual arousal and orgasm, and also in that feeling of satisfaction in both genders. It's also a, um, a hormone that uh, makes us feel bonded to our partner, especially after we've had sex with that partner.